during communion, it's acceptable to substitute the bread and wine with anything at all to represent the body and blood of Christ. And I'll post that in chat right now. Okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, let me let me see if Sister Renee would like to go first on that one. Well, sad to say, I'm not trying to be a legalist on this, but I, I say false. Um, there's a reason Jesus said to use these things to represent his body broken for us. He is the bread that came down from heaven and it's representative of the Passover and the Passover was unleavened bread, meaning it had no yeast representing that there was no sin. It was pure. It also represents how they had to be ready to leave at any moment. They couldn't wait for the bread to rise. So uh, they used no leaven. Uh, and there's a reason for it because it represents uh, uh, Christ being the bread of life, the bread that comes down from heaven. And then the wine represents covenant promise and blessing, as well as his blood and red wine or red grape juice is representative of his blood for that reason. Now, I'm not trying to be legalistic, but I see nothing in scripture where they said you can use water instead of wine or juice. Now, I believe you can be lenient in the sense that you could use juice or you could use a cracker or you could use bread as long as you understand what they mean and you do it in the spirit of remembrance of what his blood was shed for and his body was broken for. Uh, we see in the Corinthian church, they had suffered some chastisement because they were not discerning the Lord's body. They were getting drunk and uh, do, gluttonous and all other kinds of things, not treating this event as something sacred and set apart. And I, I just don't, these aren't difficult things to gather. Juice and bread or crackers are not things that are hard for us to get. And I, I think that if that's all he's asking us to do, it's not really much to ask of us. I mean, if we look at the old covenant the things that they had to do, all these rituals and stuff to even enter into his presence, having the bell on their foot. So if they drop dead, uh, they could be taken out of the holies of holies without someone else going in after them. I mean, to me, it's not much for God to ask of us to get some juice and bread to represent his body and blood. Now, I'm not being I, I really don't want to sound legalistic here. I've heard some people say I got a Dorito and some water. Or I got this and this. We do this every week, every month, I mean, on the same time every month. We let people know ahead of time we're doing this thing. So I, I personally don't think it's a lot to ask that we use actual juice or wine and or bread or cracker. Something that can be symbolic of his body and blood. Now, because I don't see anything else in scripture being used in replacement, I can't say it's okay. I, I can't. I, I also can't say it's, it's not okay or it is okay because there's nothing in scripture that gives me the answer one way or another. I can only go by what scripture says and the examples that we have in the scriptures. So I'm sorry if I come across legalistically here. But, um, and I know God knows our heart, so I cannot say one way or the other, but I would say leaning false here because of these reasons. Well, thank you, sister. Well, I guess that's about as legalistic as we'll ever hear uh, Sister Renee speak. Uh, I, um, let me see, uh, I'll just ask who'd like you to go next. It was Heather's question, so she, she should go last. Um, okay. Let, I, let's ask Lisa, sister, let, let sister Lisa go next then. Okay. I, I I guess I would say leaning false to. Could you could you read the question again, Ben? I'm sorry. Yes. it's um, It says, during communion, it's acceptable to substitute the bread and wine with anything at all to represent the body and blood of Christ. 
No, I, w I would say definitely false. Anything at all, I would say. Uh, the way it's worded, I would say definitely false. Um, I think there could be some exceptions, but um, not not a whole lot. Like if somebody had a cracker versus actual unleavened bread or just a piece of bread that might not even be unleavened. And then also I heard one preacher talk about this, and I think he is right about it. So I'm going to throw it out here. You've got people who are in prison, for example, they cannot get wine, nor can they just get great juice whenever they want, whatever. So they're very limited on what their resources are. But he said most everybody at some point can usually get bread and water. And he said he believed that one of the reasons that Jesus turned the water to wine in Scripture was so that people could possibly have that as an alternative when they uh, took the Lord's Supper in instances where they could not get wine or juice. So uh, I think that that's um, probably true. I can see that, why that, that may have been, why we see that in the scripture was the first miracle that he did. So uh, I, I would say in those instances where it's it's some form of bread, whether it's leaven or unleavened, whether it's a cracker uh, or and water, I can see that being okay. And if the person is ha has the right attitude, uh, that it is in reverence to the Lord and they're doing it in remembrance of him, then they're doing that in, in, in accordance with the scripture. But taking other things and substituting it, I don't know, I think that's a stretch. I'm not going to condemn anybody necessarily for it, especially if they're going like, this is all, literally all I have. I have nothing else. I wouldn't, I'm not judging that person to damnation. I just don't want to see people being irreverent and, you know, loosey-goosey with something that's so serious. Because remember now there's an admonishment in the scripture that uh, there are many weak and sickly among you and many sleep for not discerning the Lord's body. And they weren't reverencing it. They weren't doing what they were supposed to do. And he said it can cause you to be sleep. It can cause you to be sick or become sick and even leave this earth early. So I think we should be uh, cognizant of that, but I mean that's the best. That's the best I can answer you on that. Okay, thank you. Well, I'll go ahead. It, 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 this question won't require much time for many of us, I don't think. But uh, um, I think uh, Renee, you, your stand was so so strict that I I felt that uh, it moved me a little more more in that direction. Uh, uh, I hadn't really thought. Uh, um, about uh, the uh, being very rigid and why we should need to be more rigid on, on this. But I, I do think you're right. Uh, uh, the, really, the real problem, the way the question is written, it makes me have to say uh, certainly false, is because it says anything at all. I mean, for example, let's say I get up here the next time we do communion, and I hold up and say, here, I got a shot of Jack Daniels and I got a piece of beef jerky. You know, that would be anything at all. Uh, but I think that would be uh, really insulting. And, and, and I, I would be afraid to do it <laughs> because, I mean, there is a warning that we read uh, every single, single uh, time we do communion. We start off with that warning about how you need to uh, keep, make this uh, uh, completely uh, um, what's the word? What's the what do we say instead of fear God? Uh, respect, reverential, uh, reverence, reverence. It's got to, you know, she must have complete reverence, uh, and respect, uh, for this. It's a, it's a very serious thing. That's why he, he had to give us this warning. And I think the warning is something you better heed. Uh, now, how far can you go? How how flexible is it? Uh, now, I know that there are some people that abstain completely, completely for alcohol, either because they have a problem with alcoholism, or maybe they just don't like it or don't want to drink uh, for some reason. And uh, I don't think it has to be fermented. Um, it probably should be some kind of a grape juice, if, if not wine. Um, but I, I would think that water or something else uh, that could, might be acceptable or okay if, if it's impossible under the circumstances. Let's say you're somewhere and there's, like Renee pointed out, that, look, there really should be no excuse. 
Uh, we know that it's the first Sunday of each month. Uh, and if you want to have communion next time, look, between now and then, all the time you have to prepare for it. You can get some unleavened bread or even, I don't think it really has to be le leavened. That's something I would say would be, uh, uh, I, I would think would be flexible. He's the bread of life and it, not necessarily, he's the unleavened bread of life. <laughs> but so, uh, but to, to take some time to prepare and have the right uh, materials uh, is not a lot of, to ask. Uh, and, and it just shows that you, you care enough, you're taking it seriously enough and you're really thinking about following this uh, this admonition uh, that, that, com that comes with it. Um, now, it, the word cracker was used a couple of times. Uh, I, I usually use a cracker because uh, I don't have unleavened bread. I could probably find some, I guess, but uh, I think technically crackers or even, let's say, I have tortillas, uh, I, I think that would could fit under the definition of unleavened bread. It's a form of bread and it's not risen. Leaven means it's, it's going to rise if, there, if there's leaven in it. So if it's a tortilla or a cracker, it's not risen. I think that it would be, uh, I could safe, safely say that it's unleavened bread. Um, but I usually do have wine. Matter of fact, every time except once, I think I've uh, communion all the time, I always have a little shot glass of wine, um, just enough to do it, but not enough because I don't normally, I don't usually have more than two or three alcoholic beverages a year. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm not against it. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm not that interested in drinking alcohol as I did when I was younger. Uh, so, uh, uh, I, you know, there's no reason for me to have any more than that. That just a little bit is all, all that's needed in order to do the ceremony. Uh, but I think what really makes me say certainly false is because the, the phrase uh, anything at all. Uh, that would be, I'm really afraid the things people could come up with as substitutes uh, if we allowed that. Okay, everybody's answered, but Ben? Uh, and, Heather, and Heather's last. Go ahead, Ben. Well, I agree with everyone's answers. They're really great answers. Um, really very little left to say, uh, if anything. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any... Um, I don't think there's any uh, prescription in scripture to for how often we're supposed to do it. So, you know, it, it's not like, you know, if we're supposed to do it daily, then yeah, it would be a challenge maybe for some, in some circumstances to meet the requirements or meet the, uh, well, not would say requirements, but the, well, essentially requirements, stipulations of the Lord's Supper, you know, uh, unleavened bread, like as Renee said, and wine. Um, and so in that case, you know, because there's no stipulation on that, there's really no reason to do it without, uh, without, uh, there's no reason to, like, you know, say, oh, I'm going to take, I'm going to eat a gummy bear and a swig of, um, you know, like, like you said, Pepsi or something. I don't think, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, there's, because there's no prescription for how often you should do it. Whenever you do, you should do it properly, I believe. Um, and just so, and, and again, it's not, you know, there's no, it, there's no reason to, to, uh, substitute if you don't, you know, substitute something different if you don't have to, um. So for that reason, I, I agree with every, all your answers that uh, if you're going to do it, you know, with, you don't, it does not, if you're going to do it, do it right. <laughs> Just as scripture prescribes um, and, and not a, in, in any, any other way. So I, I would agree with all your answers. Brother Luke, mm -hmm. I, I want to say the only, uh, because the Lord's Supper is such a sacred event, it should be done thoughtfully with care. And uh, the uh, the only exception I would make is one that, like Lisa gave, where the items are impossible to get. Uh, I would say if you can't get them now, don't do it. I just think it's better not to do it uh, until you have it. But if you're in a situation long term where you know you can't get it, uh, like you can't get juice or wine, then, like she said, the Lord turned water into wine. But these things are chosen by the Lord himself as for with a reason. And we're, we're to meditate on these things. And God does know our heart. Uh, so in those rare cases, if you really wanted to commune with the Lord and it was not possible for you to get juice or wine. But we can always get some sort of bread, a cracker, bread, whatever. 
But the point is, is that it's bread, the bread of life. It represents it. There's the reason Jesus chose these items to represent his suffering for us. So the, in the rare place that a person cannot get it, I'd say wait until you can and do it properly so that it is set apart as a sacred event with much contemplation. Uh, but if you're in a situation like in prison and you can never get it, because like if that gentleman's in prison, I would say wait until he can go to the canteen and get some grape juice. That would be the right thing, I would think. But if it's just not possible, then I'd say maybe water could be a, uh, a substitute. But I'm just very careful uh, because I see no place in scripture that tells us we can go ahead and do that. And so I, I think there's a reason these things are chosen and that I, I think it's such a sacred thing. I would not want to err on this. I, I want to err on the side of caution here and say, yes, the Lord does know your heart. But mm -hmm. if you're not willing to make the effort to go to the store the day before, you know, we're going to have communion, then is your heart really into it? Do you see what I'm saying? So I, I think we need to contemplate this and realize how how special it really is. I'm not trying to be legalistic here, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's much to ask. It's it's the only ritual that the Christian body of Christ really has. Um, and not the way the Catholics think of it, but the way the Bible talks of it. So we should treat this with the utmost respect and conscience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's more I want to say on it. We'll have we'll have a chance for a follow up uh, answers, but let's let's give Heather her chance now. Uh, everybody's spoken, Heather. What do you say? I agree with everyone. I think that um, your attitude has to be um, an attitude of reverence, and you know, if if we were asked to do fifty different ceremonies then it might be a little bit more understandable but it's one one ceremony a month um and so for that reason i think that the respect is is necessary um this actually was not my question i had uh somebody from the congregation send me a list of questions to reword for him and because of that um i reworded them and submitted them but um uh, I've, I've just seen in the chat a few times where people will say, oh, well, I don't have bread and, and wine or juice or anything. So I'll just use what I've got here. And it's, I don't know, a Twinkie, um, Hendrix said a Twinkie and a, and a Coke. <laughs> so let's just say that for now, a Twinkie and a Coke. I'm sorry, but, um, it, it just does not work for me. And here's my, here's my issue with this. If that is all that you have and you do not con feel convicted in your heart that what you are doing is inappropriate, then by all means, don't share it in chat. Just keep it to yourself. As long as you are okay with what you're doing and you're not doing it to cause a problem in, in the congregation, then do it, but do it with respect and don't share it in chat. Just do what you need to do. I personally, um, normally have a cracker and a little bit of wine or um because juice is so much worse for me with diabetes um but as far as a cracker goes i mean if you if your issue is an issue with gluten you can there's gluten free substitutes that you can use i just don't see a valid reason to do it and make it public that you're doing it with something other than the bread and the wine or the juice and I did like the idea of the water, and I think that that is inspired. And I, I really, really think that that is a the only thing that I would recommend substituting. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, well, I think you're right about the Twinkie and the Coke, Hendrix. Um, but I'm wondering, what if about a Twinkie and a Diet Coke? Because the Diet Coke will counteract the Twinkie. All right, well, I. Um, you, you've often heard me talk about uh, how uh, there are factions that take a position on theology, and instead of 
having their, their, their what I believe is the right answer, they t they take it to one extreme or the other. Like uh, uh, on this this very question is an, the example would be Roman Catholics. They go to the extreme of saying that this is the actual uh, substance. It changes substance. Transubstantiation is the technical word. It means that the bread literally turns to the actual flesh of Jesus. The wine actually turns into the actual blood of Jesus. Uh, that's the official position of Roman Catholic religion. Uh, and they also say that this is a necessity for salvation. Uh, it, they have a, a cycle where you have to confess your sins and then you take communion and now you're in good standing until you sin again. And now you got to confess and get communion again. It's a cycle. I'm saved, I'm lost, I'm saved, I'm lost. It's a horrible thing, but um, uh, see the playlist on Roman Catholicism uh, debunked. Um, but so th they go to one extreme. Then you have the op operate end of the spectrum. You have the hyper dispensationalists that say that it's not for the church. Uh, they, these people believe that only the, the prison epistles of Paul are for the church. And since the communion is not in the prison epistles, then uh, they don't allow and communion. So you can see how you can take anything to an extreme. And so um, uh, in this case, we, we want to make sure that we're not going to an extreme either, you know, uh, be becoming uh, so rigid one way or the other. Uh, all, all right, uh, who would like to say more on this? Oh, I forgot, before you, you say uh, that, I, I've talked about church history and how the second generation of the, what they call the church fathers, the people who immediately uh, followed uh, after the apostles, like uh, Polycarp was a, a, a disciple of the apostle John. And so the next generation after the apostles were the church fathers. And I'm telling you, uh, that, that's how quickly the church really went into apostasy. The very next generation of leaders started making commun communion and water baptism essential for salvation. Baptismal regeneration kicked in right, right after the apostles died off. Uh, uh, Irenaeus wrote a book called... Um, uh, on heresies, and uh, he talks various th about various things, but he does talk about water baptism and uh, communion, and, and there's detailed uh, um, requirements. He goes into quite a bit of detail on, you know, how exactly all this has to be done. Uh, and, and then there's another little booklet that came out in the, I think, the end of the first century called D the Didache. Uh, and it's a, book, a booklet on uh, these details of how everything should be done. Uh, and uh, so they, they really formalized everything and really, you know, how they get, they get, they made it religious, made it uh, all kinds of legalistic religious things where everything had to be across every T, dot every I. All right. Who wants to say more on this? Oh, I did. I want to say a um, couple other quick things. One, uh, you know how the Bible says that uh, if something condemns you, then to you it is sin. So I think if a person is con convicted that they shouldn't use anything else, then they shouldn't. But for somebody, as I was saying, how uh, some people are in, in jail and they, they're not able to get, you know, because not every prison, for example, has a commissary. You know, some of these prisons are <laughs> like one step above being in an outhouse. So if they only have, uh, you know, bread and water, and they do want to do this. Um, another scripture that might support the concept of doing it would be John 1934, where the Bible says when he was pierced, uh, one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. So we know that the Bible says in other passages that his blood was poured. He said, do this as remembrance of me. Blood was poured out of his body. Well, there is scripture for blood and water pouring out of his body. So I, I would just say, you know, if it bothers you, then don't do it. But if you have no, and again, I'm talking about in a situation where a person cannot get 
wine or grape juice, whichever they uh, prefer, because there's arguments for both. I don't even worry about that. Do what your conscience allows you to do. But <clears throat> if they absolutely cannot get wine or grape juice, then water would be a suitable substitute because most everyone can get some form of bread, even in, in prisons. Some prisons where they beat people down to nothing, that's all they give them is bread and water. So uh, just just uh, giving that as an example is something that's supposed to be reverence. It's not a game. It's not a joke. Uh, uh, I'm sure that, um, you know, uh, whoever I think uh, she said Hendrix told the joke. I'm, I think it probably was a joke because Hendrix uh, tells a lot of jokes. But um, in, in all seriousness, um, this is not something to be played with, because as I pointed out earlier, if a person does not properly discern the Lord's body, it can cause a person to become ill, and it can also cause a person to leave this earth early. It's not a game. So you would do better uh, just to not <laughs> partake at all than to partake, as the Bible says, unwor unworthily, um, not discerning his body correctly. So that's all I wanted to, to, to add. And I want to confirm something Heather said. She's absolutely right regardless it's between you and god do not let your liberty become a stumbling block for another and lisa made a good point too it's based on your conscience and if your conscience condemns you and you do it anyway then it is sin unto you if you do it against your conscience it's sin to you heather saying if you're doing it uh, and you replace it with something that you know others might not be completely okay with or they might question it like for instance i think she said a twinkie and coke or something if you know that's all you have and you're not condemned you do not need to tell the chat room or people around you hey i'm going to substitute it for this uh because your liberty may be a stumbling block for them and you always got to check what spirit are you saying that out of? So if, like, you know my position on it. You've heard everybody's position on it. I think it should always be some form of juice or wine and some type of bread, whether it's a cracker or bread or whatever. We're not getting legalistic here. Um, and because it's such a solemn and sacred event, but if it's the only thing you can get and you have to replace it because you want so much to commune with him and you don't see anything in the foreseeable future where you could obtain these items, then that's your liberty, your conscience. You do not need to use your liberty for other people stumbling. You don't need other people to approve it. So because there's no clear distinction on this, then it's between you and God. And I think Heather and Lisa both made good points on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ben? I have nothing else to add. You guys absolutely crushed it. I mean, that, it's really great answers. You got this, some of the best responses. I think we've gotten to a, a question. You guys really covered every angle. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting when you, um, not only will this whole program get uploaded, but uh, each one of these questions will be uploaded uh, as an independent video on its own. So um, people will watch this and we're getting a lot more comments on those videos, those little clips that Ben is doing. And it's interesting. I really appreciate the feedback that we're getting on these clips. Uh, but I'm, I'm just, I want to thank the person that asked the question. I don't know, Heather, if they want their name mentioned, uh, but uh, I'm glad it was asked uh, because I'm, I'm really glad that we actually talked about this. Uh, it made me really think more uh, seriously about it. Okay, any more or shall we go to the next one? Okay, Ben, second okay. question. Uh, actually, let me uh, read the, I got, we got two comments. I'll read them real quick. Uh, one person says, undecided because I thought the communion uh Thanksgiving and memorial slash celebration was a huge feast, not just bread and water. Uh, another person says, we have no examples of wine, juice, or bread being replaced with other substances in the Bible. 
we should realize why Jesus chose those things to represent his body and blood. You know, it's all, what, what, that's, that those are the two responses. One thing that's interesting, too, and this is one of, like, one of the evidences I think is fascinating about scriptures, you find the little details, is that, you know, it, it, you know if, uh, if you look at an ancient kneading trough, so they're called kneading trough, where you you would knead bread. If you look, if you look up an ancient, if you just type in kneading, if you type in like Google or whatever, Bing, ancient kneading trough. Look at the pictures. You'll see, uh, you'll see like a, what looks like almost like a almost like an open coffin without a top, and then in there is the bread laid out and it's wrapped in um, uh, it's wrapped in cloth. And it says when the uh, Jews, um, during the Exodus, they had they had that the bread in kneading troughs wrapped in, in uh, cloth over their shoulders as they exited Egypt. And um, if you look at uh, an old, old test, the, the, the tombs in which people were um, buried in Jesus' day, they put them into a cave or whatever, and it looked like a kneading trough, and he was absolutely wrapped in, in um, he, he was wrapped in, in um, uh, uh, cloth. And uh, yeah, obviously he's the bread of life. So just those little details like that you see in scripture, uh, I think are really super fascinating. And again, it was it was it was a it was bread that was almost tasteless bread. And so I don't think it's supposed to be uh, you know like a uh, a, a scrumptious meal uh, when we when we partake of the holy communion. I think it's um I, I'm sorry to say holy communion sounds very Catholic. Uh, it's holy, of course, but. Um, a communion uh i think that you know we should do it with, in reverence and uh like like you guys mentioned so uh, uh okay ready for the next question well hey let, let me i think we need to talk a little bit more about uh the hendrix's point the uh of course there's not much detail in the scripture other than what hendrix said uh about it you know, them having a meal and some people overeating, eating too much, and other people being poor and not having any food, and that that being a problem. So we know that much. Uh, but the way I would putting all that together, the way I would imagine it is is that okay, they're together to have a meal, but they're not as someone is leading in communion for everybody to do together, uh, and just as we do this. Uh, uh, I imagine that's exactly the way it was done. Uh, everybody would follow along with, and uh, they wouldn't be pick up a pork chop and, and instead of instead of the bread. They would you still use the bread and the wine for the actual ceremony, even though in front of them might be a plate of other food. So I don't think that just because you've got a plate of other food there, it means that you can substitute while you're doing communion something else. I mean, I'm, I'm just speculating, so. Anybody else know more than that? I actually agree 100% with that because um, on the very first communion, which was done with Jesus and the disciples, there was the Passover meal that they were they were having. But of all of the elements that were there for the Passover meal, the two things that Jesus pointed out to use was the bread and the wine. Um whether the wine was alcoholic or not is totally up to your interpretation and your understanding of the scripture. But in that time, <laughs> more than likely it was alcoholic. The point being that he could have said the bitter greens. He could have said the lamb. He could have said any other thing. But the thing that he chose to represent his body was the bread. And the thing that he chose to represent his blood was the wine. And I think that the least that we can do is to honor that and respect that. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. I think that is, uh, should clarify it. Um, all right. Brother Luke, let, can I say one thing here? Mm -hmm. Our answers tonight were not to specifically condemn anyone here in the chat in the past who has replaced the items with anything it's not to say to go back and say a couple of weeks ago somebody replaced it with this or that and now we're condemning them or putting them down we're not doing that we're talking about a general statement of what we believe the purpose of the lord's supper is and how we should treat it as something sacred and in the future going forward these are what we believe 
and every person to their own conscience. And if your liberty is going to make another person stumble, then maybe we shouldn't share that, the details of that information with others, because it can, one, make light of uh, the Lord's Supper, two, may offend or cause another to stumble or cause confusion. So again, our answers were not to condemn anybody that in the past did anything differently than what we're saying. So this is not personal to anybody that replaced the bread and wine with something else. That's not our point. Okay. I actually would like to second that as the person who rewrote the question and submitted it. These question, this question was not for, like she said, was not to contempt, condemn anyone. But there was an example that we saw that the person who submitted the question to me for rewording saw and was concerned about, not for that specific week, but for the future looking forward for anyone else who may think it is okay to swap out the elements. It was not to condemn, but rather to learn. Listen, we don't know until we learn. So that's why we're here is to, to learn and to teach and to come to a better understanding of what the Bible says about these things. So that's